Right, another episode of Solid State Cinema where we finally fulfill the prophecy of the Sansui AU7700 Integrated Amplifier. As you know, this is a very sought after piece and I've been searching for one for quite some time. So I have quite the treat for you. It's not an oyster cracker, it is an actual AU7700 in need of repair here at Solid State Cinema. Came from a local fellow. His complaint is his one channel is cutting in and out. So let's see if we can figure it out. But first, gotta do a little bit of damage control. Last winter, I shot a video of a similar amplifier. It was AU something. They all start with AU, don't they? It was winter time, and I made the remark that when I was in the Air Force, we used to call these things sand sewage receivers and amplifiers. I looked outside and some of the snow melted. I don't know why. So in this episode, we are not going to refer to it as that. It will be a Sansui. How's that? Let's go. Well, here she is, the King Sansui AU7700. Complaint is, is one channel cuts in and out. So I've got it connected to a CD player right now. We'll play that. We'll check the channels. So I'm going to hit play. There we go. All right. So she is playing. Here's a left. Here comes a right. You see her volume drops way down. But it's still playing. And I did notice when I turned on the amplifier that the protect relay does come on in the right timing. So I'm assuming there's nothing wrong with the final outputs. Must be a preamp issue. So let's try the mode switch and see if that makes any difference. Remember the left is working fine, so we're going to concentrate on the right. Look at there. Reverse it works. Normal it does not. Mono it does. That's very odd. So it almost makes me think we have an issue with the mode switch. So before we go down that little rabbit hole, why don't we verify that all the inputs are acting the same. Right now I'm on the auxiliary one. That is what position it was at when the customer brought it here. So let's go over to tuner input, still at normal, and see if we have the same issue. So I'm on tuner input. Ah. No difference with that switch. So it's not the mode switch. It's this channel working. Yep. So at this point, both channels are playing just fine. So let's pop the top and take a look at the selector switch. I hope it's not bad, because that would be very bad. All right, I flipped my lid. You guys already knew that anyway. Let me put these jacks back over to the auxiliary input. Okay. I'm going to start our Muzak over. And yeah, I'm using that non-copyright stuff because I'm getting tired of those little flags saying, you, you violated a rule. Okay, so here we go. So we're back playing. Right side is dead. Left side is working. So we're just going to leave it right over here. So what I suspect is maybe bad contacts on the selector switch. They could just simply be dirty. So if that's the case, if I were to move these around, she would cut in and out, right? It's not happening. Flex the board a little bit. Not making any difference whatsoever. I do notice that we have some pregnant caps down here. There's one right there and one right over there. And I checked this on the schematic. These were 0.47 microfarad caps at 50 volts. They've lost their skin, and they've grown, so those need to be changed. Actually, one of those could be bad. But first, I want to give this guy a little bit of a thump test. Now, here is the um, preamp connect and separate switch. So if there is a bad connection, that would have uh, solved it. Didn't happen, did it? So, oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. All right, hold on a second. So I'm moving these RCA jacks. 
Uh huh. Great. Make sure they're seated, and they are. So just found it, guys. All right, what we got going is obviously either this auxiliary jack back here is damaged, or we got a solder connection problem. So I'm gonna have to get my magnifying glass light out. I'm gonna look down here in the old porthole. All right, so I'm using a bright light and my magnifying glass here to see if these contacts look deformed or damaged. And they don't. So my guess is, I noticed that this jack right here, the auxiliary jack, looks a little bit tweaked. So, you know, these all face up. Your RCA jacks plug in. It could have gotten hit. Or possibly there was some other equipment on the top and it got moved and snagged it. And gave this guy a little bit of uh, abuse. So... I'm going to have to take this whole back panel off and get this board out and inspect it for bad solder connections. And while I'm in there, I'll go ahead and change out these questionable capacitors. So I've never actually worked on one of these model Sansui's before, but it looks like this panel comes off. There's about 10 million screws holding it in place, and of course we got all these controls and things that are coming up through, but my guess is, is this will come off which will give me access to this board because this board actually takes off and goes under this platform okay then I was looking and these switches have these unique couplers on there they look like fuse holders I think they actually are they are fuse holders how unique is that so I'm going to have to pop those off and retract these switches there's a spline there you can see very crafty way they did that Hopefully, when I take all that off and get all the screws off, I'll be able to lift this board out and take a look underneath. Time to take out the screws. Here we go. So I'm just taking this one step at a time. I remove this side panel, and there's two screws to this bracket, and I've removed all the perimeter screws, and I notice now that this will lift. Okay. So maybe if I get really lucky, there's a way that this will lift out and I can look at the bottom of that board without having to take all this hardware off. Right, I've made some progress. I had to take all the screws out except for the speaker jacks. They are still installed. I'm able now to lift this up. I did have to unsolder this ground runner to this post. But now, I think, I can get this guy up out of the way and pull this board back. i got to get these couplings undone ease this board back it might be in business I do see a wire here going to the selector switch and there's another wire going to the board from down below so I'll probably have to pop the bottom and see if there's some little plug-in connectors but man we're getting close so I noticed too there's these nuts here on the switches and they're already loose so I don't know if somebody's already been in here attempting this or maybe just over time they loosened up because there are no lock washers. So we're getting real close to be able to retract this board. So I've got those splines retracted from these couplers. That's all loose. I believe I might be able to raise the board, flip it up on its side here, and get access to the bottom and see what's going on. So I'm removing the bottom so I can have better access see what I'm doing so I don't damage things. Just gonna pull the bottom anyway to inspect it. Just wondering if I could get away with just working on top. Yeah. It's gonna be a joy. Another pregnant cap right there. It's old, what do you expect? Alright, let's keep going. I've got the board free. There's some cables down here fighting me, but I have enough access now to inspect these connections. It's going to be a little bit tricky, but I can prop this up and use my magnifying glass. I can inspect, see if I see cracks, correct that, change these caps, and get the board back in. So here is a very unique view of these solder connections under the board. So the ones we're having problems with is the fourth position over. So one, two, three four 
Look right there. It's cracked. Right around the connection. The ground is also cracked. As a matter of fact, all these jacks have some evidence of cracking on them. Like this one over here. Zoom over here if you can see it. This is a good one. Look at that. Crack city, man. The Samsung crack. Ha! Ah, anyway, there's a lot of bad solder connections here. I'm going to repair all that. Change the caps and cross my fingers because the only way to test it is to put it all the way back together and try it again. So I'm going to get in here and do a little bit of upside down soldering. Unfortunately, this is the nature of the beast. When it comes to circus boards, they're going to crack. But if you look at how many years this guy's been in service, I'd say it did pretty darn good. But you just got to be cautious when you're plugging in your jacks to your amp. Don't wiggle them around, don't manhandle them because you're probably going to crack the solder connections. So this is going to take a while, but I'll get it. I've reflowed all the solder on those RCA input jacks. Do them all. Okay, I kid around a lot, but no joking matter. Just reflow all of them because they could be cracked. You're not going to see it. The other thing that you want to resolder are these selector switches. Same deal. Even if they don't look cracked, you know that over the years they've seen some vibrations from operation of the switch. So resolder them while you're in here. All right, we're all soldered up. Here are those two pregnant caps. Here's the skin from one of them. I didn't find the other one. Now it's time to get this guy back together. All right, so far so good. Got the board back in. Nothing broke. Everything lines up. Notice there's a little bit of dirt and grime down here by these jacks. It's a good time to go ahead and get that cleaned out. Because I doubt that anybody's going to be in this thing for a long time. Same deal with this panel. Now is the prime opportunity to get that dirt off of there from over the years because those jacks are not in the way. I'm going to take a little bit of time to clean this and we'll put her back together. Alright, I've got her back together the point where it's safe to test. Keep your fingers crossed. I really don't want to take it back apart. Got the CD player hooked up. Balance is in the middle. Normal. We're on auxiliary one, which was the troublemaker. Okay. Here we go. Bing. It's a good sign. Here we go. We got both channels. I'm in normal. There's reverse. It's a little dirty. Excellent. I still want to uh, clean these selector switches and then get the rest of the screws in and I'll test it again. Alright, a successful repair of the AU7700 here at Solid State Cinema! Now yes, I didn't go any further than repairing that intermittent channel because the owner didn't say rebuild it. He said fix it. Okay? So don't get in there and say, whoa, I would have changed this and I would have done that. Because you know what? That's not what it's all about. If the owner contacts me and says, hey, Terry, let's go further, then I'll put out another video. But in the meantime, mission accomplished. Solid State Cinema, signing out.